Brent, how are you doing? Thank yourself, Maddie. Good, good. Welcome, everyone. Welcome back to the Unbiased Rugby Podcast. Um, been a minute. Please do us a favor. Like and subscribe if you like the content. We will be here for the World Cup. Brent, looking at the World Cup, three weeks away, um, you know, a couple of warm-up games have, have, have happened, and uh, I see a few shift changes, sort of, you know. Um, Definitely. If, you want to, if I could find the right words to put it. I think that um, it's it's going to be completely different to what everybody expects. Um, I mean, what what are our pools looking like? We've got... Uh, who, who's in Pool A? Um, in Pool A will be New Zealand, France... Italy, Namibia, Uruguay. Okay, Pool B. Ireland, Romania, Scotland, South Africa, and Tonga. Pool C. Australia, Fiji, Georgia, Portugal, and Wales. Pool D. Argentina, Chile, England, Japan, and Samoa. Okay, so uh, obviously one side of the pool is much harder than the other, but everybody knows that already. Um, the other top five. Yeah, everybody's got France and Ireland to top their pools. I disagree. Uh, I know I that's going to cause a little, little bit. Yeah, I think, I think it's, it's going to cause a lot bit. of controversy, but I completely disagree. Uh, I think New Zealand and South Africa are going to top that pool A and pool B. I reckon so as well. I think um, the beginning of the season, during the Six Nations and everything like that, France and Ireland looked extremely strong. They did. Um, they were peaking at that point. I don't know if they if they're on a down slope. I'm not too sure. But South Africa and well, we know that New Zealand's peaking at the correct time. South Africa still got a bit of work to do. Um, yeah, it's it's changed a little bit since the rugby championship passed, and then now the summer series warm ups. It's it's been a very different um, expectation to what we thought it would be with the Northern Hemisphere teams. Yeah, I think that a lot of hype went around the Northern Hemisphere teams, especially last year when, when Ireland went to New Zealand and they beat yep. them twice in New Zealand. And if we look back, it was a very tough time on New Zealand rugby. That You know, when Ian Foster just came in and uh, it, it, was, yep. it was a bit of a shambles. But he, he's found his way. Correct. Um, I mean, everybody thought he was hopeless last year and everyone's, you know, he, he's sort of shut us all up now. He's found his way. He's got his team. And like you said, they're peaking at the perfect time. I've definitely got it. And like I said, it will cause controversy, but, you know, it is what it is. I don't think that it's going to go how everyone thinks it's going to go. The Northern Hemisphere teams are not performing as they were. Or they're performing very well against each other. Um, and last year performed very well against the Southern Hemisphere teams. But this year's a different ball game. And we haven't really played them this year, but I just don't see it happening so this is what i've got i've got obviously um new zealand topping pool a with france coming in second then i've got in pool b i've got south africa topping ireland and ireland coming second um, could be a close quite, one though if you take it into, could be into close. consideration with scotland scotland it coming could, in second there it could be close between ireland and scotland yes but i've got no doubt about it that south africa will top that pool and 100%. people are going to lose their minds but I, i've got no doubt about it uh, I'll put my house on it. I'm quite happy to. I think that uh, Pool C, who have we got in Pool C again? Um, Australia and Fiji, I reckon, will top those pools. Australia though. and Fiji are going to top. So I think Australia will come out on top there with, with Fiji coming second. Correct. Um, I, I don't think Wales are going to come through there at all. No, they're, they're having a bit of a hard time. We saw last week and the week before that, they, they're struggling. They couldn't beat... Um, they, they couldn't beat England with, and England had 13 men on the pitch at one stage, you know, with 12, did, did I they, think it was. Did they not beat England? The second game, no. They came back the after, the Owen, o, o, after the Owen Farrell fiasco there and everything like that. At one stage, England was sitting with two yellows and one red card. Mm. And, and then, they managed to come back. Yeah, no, magic stuff that from England. Um, but, I mean, I don't see them doing well either. Then we've got Argentina topping Pool D with England coming runner up. I reckon so, yeah. All right. So that leaves us with a couple quarter, well, that leaves us with our quarterfinal uh, predictions, which are going to be South Africa versus France in quarterfinal or, or 
let me just have a quick look here. Uh, Quarterfinal yeah, be... one. Uh, yeah, will be South New Africa. Winner of, pool, winner of Pool C versus runner up of Pool D. So quarterfinal one is going to be Australia versus England. Correct. Quarterfinal two is going to be winner of Pool B versus the runner up of Pool A, which is South Africa versus France. Winner of Pool D versus runner up of Pool C, which is Argentina versus Fiji in quarterfinal three. Quarterfinal four is winner of Pool A versus runner up of Pool B which is New Zealand versus Ireland, right? So we've got Australia versus England. We've got South Africa versus France. We've got Argentina versus Fiji. Then we've yep. got New Zealand versus Ireland. Now, Correct. I've obviously got, I, I can see this going, people are going to lose their minds. I've got South Africa over France, no doubt about it. Um, I think so too. Know, in a quarterfinal, and I've got New Zealand over Ireland. Yes. I have got Argentina over Fiji, and I've got Australia over England. So that leaves you yeah. with the with the semi-finals of South Africa versus Australia and New Zealand versus Argentina. Yeah. So you've got a, a remake of the rugby championship coming up to the last uh, three games of the Rugby World Cup. I think it's going to be like that, except. Um... England, Australia, they're both struggling at the moment. I do think that Eddie Jones is bringing in some serious power in attacking coaching there from, uh, by, by Hansen. Yeah. Um, so let's check what he can do in a short period of time. But he's going to need his help, seeing as he's decided to leave his skipper, Hooper, back at, back at home. Yeah, so it's, it's... yeah I, don't, I just don't see them knocking us out in, in a semi. Um, no, no. But I'm talking about moment. England versus Australia there. Um, yes, I think, okay. So you, you're not sure who's going to come through on that quarterfinal is what you're saying? On that quarterfinal, yeah. I reckon that um, Australia, England... Don't get me wrong. South Africa's not going to have an easy time against France at home because that, that stadium's no. going to be packed. No, but I still have us I still have us upping them. I do. I really do. I reckon. Uh, we've done it. We've done it. Uh, you know, we've won the World Cup in France before in 2007. Um, we can do it again. Uh, you know, and I, I just this is and this is not from a biased point of view. Um, South Africa's got a long way to go, but I think people are highly overrating the Northern Hemisphere teams at the moment. I mean, at the moment, Scotland, yeah. Scotland just won up France. Yes, you can call it a C team or whatever if you want to go into that in their first test, and in their second test they put in a stronger team and they still won by a ball hit. Um, not just that, Matt. Um, they also lost their starting flower off, which is also I mean, a massive hit to France. Huge. Huge hit to France, and I mean, but then again, South Africa's got a bit of a you know a goal kicking issue at the moment. So we also don't have a you know at ten we we're pretty comfortable with with the box running game, but you know the kicking game's a, a thing. So so that's all things to take into consideration. But I do see us beating France in France. I re I really do. I know we yeah. lost last year by a by a ball here again at the, in, at the end of year tour. Um, and then obviously, so to me. That leads to uh, New Zealand South Africa final, which will be incredible. It'll be an absolute cracker. It'll be horrible for the Northern Hemisphere, and I know they don't want to hear it. But if you look at, if you look, if you've got eyes and you can see what I can see, um, you know, at the moment, I, I don't see it going any other way. Yeah, uh, to be honest with you, if we come down to that point, I won't make a prediction on that final. I don't know where we I are at that I point. I can't make a prediction on the final until we get there. Um, so I can't tell you who's going to win, but I can I can pretty much comfortably tell you that it will be a South Africa All Black final. Hundred percent. But uh, one one major thing is if if Lebok doesn't start his kicking game correctly, we will have a problem in that quarter final. Absolutely, against France, absolutely. So they because need to figure that out. We need out. those points because he's putting our, our forwards under so much pressure, trying to steal that ball, and then we get we get we get the penalty chances, and he's just not taking the points. Then rather kick to the line, let us ball it. Then boring yeah, rugby, but let's got, ball it. He's got a, he's got a few games to warm up before that. Um, so that's that's my prediction, and I mean, you you agree with me, or you you know, like you say, we might have a little bit of trouble here and there, but you think we'll get there? I do think that we'll get there. I do think that it's going to be a full-out um, Southern Hemisphere uh, semi. Mm. I do, and I, I think it'll be an incredible final. I mean, I was three months old the last time New Zealand and South Africa were in a final in 1995. Um, yep. so, so I'm very excited. And um, 
it all comes down to the bragging rights at the end of the day because whoever wins that final has got four four trophies. Hundred percent, and I mean it's just for some Southern Hemisphere is absolutely fantastic if it does happen that way, but you never know what happens, Matt. It's like we said, it's yeah, the look, most we, competitive. It's the most competitive World Cup that we've ever had. Well, we but, don't. Yeah, that's what we're saying, Brent. That's what everybody is saying, but. Yeah, but um, if you look at the past couple of weeks, exactly what's been happening, Ireland has been showing a little bit here and there. England has been showing absolutely nothing. They haven't, they haven't scored a backline try in five games. That is a shocker, Matt. You're telling absolutely. me there's not even, a, not even an interception or anything. That, that is blind, mate. That's absolutely yeah. blind. So, um, I've said it Argent- once, I'll say it again. England couldn't get drunk in a bar at the moment. Yeah, no, no, they don't. And Wales as well. Wales is really struggling at the moment. I mean, I've got one of the top coaches, Gatlin, but it just doesn't seem to be clicking at the moment. Um, no. But that's our predictions. What... I think if anybody, if you agree or if you disagree, let us know in the comments. Um, tell Please us soon. if you think we're crazy. Uh, tell us if you agree with us. Tell us if that's a final that you would like to see. Um, yeah. yeah. But, right, this is, I this is... but um, I, I do think that... Um... South Africa is also going to see exactly where they stand on Friday when that match takes place at Twickenham. Absolutely, we're going to do a we're going to do a preview to that just uh, following this video. So if you Correct. if you guys want to have a look at that preview, just make sure to give it a, a, a watch and, and like and subscribe. We'll do a preview. We'll run through the South African team. We'll run through who we think the All Blacks are going to play. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Marnie Lebok and, and the kicking situation and the injury situation and um, and and the exciting choices the Springboks have made at uh, outside centre as well as uh, around the pitch. 100%. All right, buddy. Appreciate okay. it. I'll chat to you just now. Chat to you just now, brother. Just bye.